Hello, this is Pastor Mike Creekmore, pastor at Bim New Baptist Church in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I'm coming to you uh, this afternoon, this evening from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I've been in Myrtle Beach uh, for uh, the past couple of days, going to be here a couple more days. And, uh, and I wanted to uh, give a short message tonight and also um, I'm in a hotel room, so my voice, I won't uh, be as loud as I normally am. And so let's uh, jump right into the text tonight. And we're going to be looking at the 23rd Psalm. Let me read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. He lets me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for as long as I shall live. Let's pray, and then we're going to dive in. Lord Jesus, tonight we pray that you will speak our hearts. And Lord, give us a message tonight. Encourage someone tonight. I love the 23rd Psalm. And I know that people listening tonight, that's one of their favorites too. Lord, speak to us in these moments and i know i'm in a little different environment tonight in a hotel room myrtle beach uh, so help my voice to be uh, lower than normal uh, even though i'm excited about the text lord uh, i pray that you will speak to us get me out of the way and may jesus be high and lifted tonight in jesus name we pray amen I recently read the government version of the 23rd Psalm, and it was a really, it kind of caught my eye, and so I wanted to read the 23rd Psalm tonight in the political realm. Uh, it goes like this, the politician is my shepherd, I'm always in want. He maketh me lie down on park benches, he leadeth me beside the steel factories he disturbeth my soul yes though i walk through the valley of the shadow of depression and recession i anticipate no recovery for he is with me he prepareth a reduction in my salary in the presence of my enemies he anointeth my small income with great losses my expenses runneth over Surely unemployment and poverty shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in a mortgaged house forever. I thought that was pretty good. As we read uh, the book of Psalms, we know that the 51st Psalm is the most painful Psalm. The 84th Psalm is the most palatial Psalm. The 103rd Psalm is the most pleasurable Psalm. Psalm 119 is the most perfect psalm. And then Psalms uh, 146 through 150 are the most praiseworthy psalms. And as we come tonight to the 23rd psalm, it's the most precious psalm. It consists of 118 words, but 116 of these words are devoted to explaining the first two words, which are, the Lord. This psalm, the psalm is more uh, than green pastors. It's more than still waters. It's more than tables. It's more than cups running over. This psalm is about the Lord that makes us to lie down in green pastures and leads us beside still waters. It is about the one who prepares the table and fills our cups. The, the whole psalm gives a description of the Lord who is our shepherd. 
In fact, we find several names for God in this one psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my provider. The Lord is my peace. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my righteousness. The Lord is there. The Lord, our banner. The Lord, my sanctifier. The Lord, the Most High God. Wow, what a psalm. Psalm 23 describes the loving, living, and lasting relationship between a shepherd and his sheep. You know, I thought about this. Of all the ways that he could have described us, he could have said, my people are like bears, they are strong. He could have said, my people are like lions, fearless and brave. He could have said, my people are like foxes, shrewd and wise. He could have said, my people are like doves, peaceful and meek. But instead, he refers to his people as sheep. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. Sheep do not have the reputation for being smart, shrewd, or superior. Uh, they have the reputation of being stupid. They are dumb. They are defenseless. They require a shepherd to care for them, to protect them, to provide for the basic necessities of life. Sheep remind me of the fellow who went into a shoe store uh, one day to try on shoes. He tried on a pair of shoes and the salesman asked him, how did they feel? He said, they're too tight. Uh, the salesman said, well, try them with, your, with the tongue out or your tongue out. And uh, he stuck his tongue out like that and he said uh, they are still too tight <laughs> Psalm 23 6 describes two of our nearest and dearest friends they are God's sheepdogs who have worked for us in the past are watching over us in the present and waiting beyond us in the future well, tonight I'm going to be brief, and so in being brief, I'm going to look at the first statement that I made, God working for us. Really, that's what this psalm, as it kicks off, that's what it's saying. The Lord is my shepherd. God is working for us. Uh, in Psalm 22, the good shepherd dying for his sheep. In Psalm 23, the great shepherd living for his sheep. And then in Psalm 24, our glorious shepherd coming for his sheep. In Psalm 22, he is our substitute. In Psalm 23, he is our shepherd. In Psalm 24, he is our sovereign. In Psalm 22, uh, he is a psalm of the cross. In Psalm 23, it's a psalm of the crook. And then in Psalm 24, it is a psalm of the crown. And so let's look at this psalm quickly tonight. And as I do, I see the personal connection we enjoy. Notice how this psalm begins. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. When this psalm begins, David is writing in the first person. He uses the possessive pronoun, personal pronoun, my, to talk about his relationship to the shepherd. He did not say the Lord is a shepherd. He did not say the Lord is our shepherd. He did not say uh, the Lord. He did not say, I want you to understand, he did not say the Lord is your shepherd. Instead, David tells us that he has a personal relationship with the Lord. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. In John 10, he is the good shepherd. In Hebrews 13, 20, he's the great shepherd. In 1 Peter 5, 4, he's the chief shepherd. But in Psalm 23, I want you to understand, he is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. The relationship between a shepherd 
and his sheep. Uh, the connection is between a savior and his saints. It becomes very personal with the use of pronouns he and me. He maketh me, he leadeth me, he restoreth my soul or me. He leadeth me, uh, thou art with me, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Do you see how many times he uses the personal pronouns he or me? A, as a young playwright, Shakespeare was given his rendition of Psalm 23. Before him had gone another man who had recited Psalm 23 so wonderfully that he received a standing ovation. Once Shakespeare had finished Psalm 23, there wasn't a dry eye in the building. The man asked Shakespeare about why, uh, why they had been received so differently. Shakespeare replied, Sir, you know the psalm, but I know the shepherd. You know the psalm, but I know the shepherd. Wow, what a powerful statement. Let me ask you tonight, do you know the shepherd? Well, we see on the one hand that there is a personal connection that we enjoy, but also we see the precious care we experience because our personal uh, because of our personal connection with the shepherd we experience the precious care of the shepherd i want to give you uh, several statements tonight uh, let's look at the resources i shall not want the lord is my shepherd and then we read on i shall not want the shepherd provides for every need every need you have, every need I have. No lack is, uh, there's no lack. Uh, he provides, he comes through. The Lord is my shepherd, he's all I want. That's a good translation, my friend. I heard a little boy say that one time as he was reciting the 23rd Psalm. What a good translation. The Lord is my shepherd. He's all I want. And he provides everything that I need. So we have the resources. We have the rest. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, the sheep prefer the tender green grasses. The shepherd leads them to a place where he knows they will be fed. He makes them lie down because he knows that they cannot properly digest their food unless they lie down, and they won't lie down unless they feel that it is safe. With all of that in mind, uh, the shepherd tenderly leads his sheep to the places of greatest safety and nutrition. Wow, what a Savior we have. What a God we have. What a shepherd we have. And we also see refreshment. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Sheep will not drink from a running stream. Sheep are not designed for swimming with their heavy wool. So the shepherd looks for a gentle flowing stream uh, for refreshment. And then we have the restoration. He restored my soul. Uh, he heals. He helps. He hears them. Uh, he heals them. He helps them. And he hears them. And we also see the road. He leaves me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Um, uh, shepherds always lead his sheep in the same direction he's going. It is a good path. It is the right path. Our shepherd will always lead us down the path, path that causes us the, the, the most joy and the most fulfillment and the most safety and the most help that he can give. When we follow in his steps, when he leads us and we follow, I'm telling you, it's a marvelous, a marvelous life to be lived. 
And then we see the release. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art rid me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see, he corrals, he corrects, he counts, he comforts. Let me say that again. With the rod, he corrals, he corrects. With the staff, he counts and he comforts. The rod was never used on the sheep, only the enemy. The staff is what the shepherd uses for his sheep. And then we find refuge. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Shepherd, a shepherd never throws to the ground the food he gathers. Rather, the sheep eat out of the shepherd's hand. What a beautiful description of what God does for us. God provides a table, not a snack bar. And God lays out a lavish, a, a, a buffet like we've never seen before. God prepares the table and we eat out of his hand. And then the remedy, thou anointest my head with all uh, protection, prevention, um, uh, vipers crawl out of holes and bite the nose of the sheep. Uh, shepherds pour a circle of oil around every hole he can find. The sheep can eat in safety. Oil helps prevent sunstroke on the heads of the sheep. When a sheep is wounded, the shepherd will put oil on the wound to prevent infection. God surrounds us with the oil of the Holy Spirit to protect, prevent, and preserve us. Do you see how God is speaking to us through this psalm? And then we have rejoicing my cup runneth over. The shepherd did not put to the mouth of his sheep a cup half full. It was a cup filled to the brim. The shepherd would fill his cup to the brim and then the sheep would stick its nose down into the cup right up to his eyes causing the cup to run over god has been good to us let me say that again god has been good to us he daily loads us down with his benefits his resources his rest his refreshment his restoration his road his release his refuge his remedy and his rejoicing let me say that again god loads us down with his benefits god pours out the manifold blessings of god and it comes by way of resources and rest and refreshment and restoration and road and release and refuge and remedy and rejoicing what a God we serve. And so real quickly tonight, I wanted to go through the, really the first, uh, just, a, just a touched the hem of the garment of this text tonight because I'm in an unusual situation, but I did not want to skip this Wednesday night. I wanted to give what God had laid on my heart, the 23rd Psalm. And I'm going to finish up this little mini this little mini-series next Wednesday night. I'll be back home and and can uh, go a little bit longer and uh, dive into the text a little bit more. But what a great God we serve. What a good God we serve. And you can see behind me uh, the the ocean and the waves and, and the endless water. What a God of creation. What a God of majestic nature that he is majesty what a god we serve and so tonight as we praise that god and thank that god and and what a good god he is and he's good all the time and he never ceases to be good and that's the god we serve and so tonight i want to pray as we close out this message thank you for tuning in it's been a little different for me tonight having to calm down just a little bit in, in this hotel room but at the same time I wanted to teach faithfully 
the Word of God. I want you to be faithful to the Word of God. And what a psalm we have, the 23rd Psalm. Let's pray tonight. Lord Jesus, thank you for this study. Thank you for these few minutes. Thank you for those that tune in, those that will tune in, and those that uh, are, are really struggling right now. And this 23rd Psalm can really help them. It can encourage them, comfort them. Lord, I love you. I praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And I'll, I'll see you again. Um, if you don't tune in on Sundays, I'll see you again next Wednesday night. God bless you. Have a great Wednesday. And I hope that God will just wrap your heart around the 23rd Psalm as we continue to study it next Wednesday night.